Happy Easter! Let's make some bread together. Okay, folks, here is the Easter bread, fresh and hot, out of the oven. And this is like really big and puffy. Just to let you know how big it is, here are my hands right here. And I don't have these big lobster cracking hands or anything. I just have like, you know, regular female hands. And, and it's, it's just nice and large. All right, friends, let's start making this Easter bread. You can also make it for other special occasions or if you feel like just baking something extra special in the kitchen and you have a little bit of time. Now we're going to start here with one and a half tablespoons of fast rise yeast. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of sugar. The next step is to add our temperature appropriate water. So I have a half a cup of water here and I'd like it to be about 105 to 115 degrees. So right now it's around 107 degrees. Mix this together and then set it aside for about 15 minutes. Now I like to use a thermometer to test the water for my yeast. You don't really have to do that. Generally the historical way it's been done is people just use the finger test. If the water feels warm to your finger, then it's generally good enough to make your yeast rise. But when you use expensive ingredients, you know, I, I'm an anxious person, so I like to use one of these just to make sure. All right, this recipe uses a lot of butter and I'm all for any recipe that uses a lot of butter. So you're going to need two sticks plus two tablespoons of butter and melt it in a saucepan. Here we have our butter all nice and melted and golden and now it is time to add one cup of cold whole milk. And then just set this aside. This is going to go into our dough mixture. All right, look how puffy our yeast mixture has gotten. And this is really ideal if you can get your yeast puffy like this. This took about 15 minutes, which is what I suggest uh, you wait. And then we're going to add this to this mixture that I'm going to put together next, which includes melted butter, and eggs and all the rich ingredients. Now take five eggs and crack them and put them in a bowl. Add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, mix, and then add one cup of sugar, granulated sugar. So what I'm going to do is just take this mixture and put it back in this pan. This recipe requires a lot of flour. So pour in seven cups of all-purpose flour, loosely packed. Next, add a half a teaspoon of baking powder. All right, now this recipe requires using this spice right here to make it taste the, the way it's really intended to taste. It is called ground mahlab or ground mahleb, depending on what pronunciation you're using. And it is basically a ground cherry seed used in Armenian baking, Arab baking, sometimes Greek baking, maybe even some other cultures use it too. And there aren't really many substitutions for this, so I recommend getting it. I will have a link to this below my video if you're interested, or you can, if you go into a Middle Eastern grocery store, they most likely will have this. Add in one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of the ground matlab. I don't recommend tasting this 
out of the bottle because it does taste kind of bitter before it's cooked with these other ingredients. So let's mix these all together. Just add a quarter teaspoon of table salt. Now it's time to integrate the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and I think I am going to need my bigger bowl for this. Okay folks, I have my giant bowl here. This is the daddy of all bowls. He is big. So let's get this flour in here. Now you know before I had this big daddy bowl here, I used a big stock pot. There was a time I couldn't afford to get a giant bowl for a while, so I used my big stock pot. It was a little narrow, but it worked. Everything fit in there. Here I have my wet ingredients, and I'm just going to pour that in there. All right, let's get in there with our hands and really combine these ingredients well. I love the feel of dough in my hands. Nice and soft and puffy. And it just makes you anticipate what is to come in a little bit. At this point, I'm going to lay the dough on the surface of the counter, which is completely cleaned. And this is what I use in place of a cutting board because I find that the surface on my counter is really good to work with uh, with dough. So I'm going to add a little bit of the flour that's left on the sides of the bowl just to add a tiny bit more flour to this. And I'm also going to preheat my oven now to 350 degrees. So this dough is just about ready for shaping now. I'm just adding a little bit more flour to uh, final, finalize the, you know, the texture that I like the dough to be. And that sh I think that'll be enough. I like to poke the dough with my fingers to get the flour in there. Then roll it up a little bit. Integrate the flour that's on the counter. Now my rule for the moisture level for my breads, my baking breads, if any of you have seen my other baking videos, I always state it. If your dough feels like the moisture level of you know children's play-doh that is the ideal uh, dough moisture level it won't it, that way it's not too heavy not too dry turns out just right what I do is I rinse off a pot lid in hot water and then I place that on top of the dough because it keeps a little bit of moisture in there. So leave that on there for about 25 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll shape it into the bread shape that we're going to use for baking. Now to shape this I am basically going to cut this down the middle in half. I'm going to take each of these pieces and make them long. Long and a little thinner, not too thin though. So let's start with this one over here. You can also do a braided version 
but I find I mess up the braids sometimes because they're thicker in some areas than others. And maybe some of you are better at doing that than I am. Doing two long pieces is a lot simpler, for me anyway. You see, the stow is nice and flexible, and it stretches out pretty easily. Now I'm basically going to do the same thing with the other piece. So let's move this one back a little. And do the same thing with this other piece. Now after you have your desired shape of bread on your pan, take an egg and just scramble it with your fork. Add in a teaspoon of sugar and then mix again. Now take a brush to the mixture and brush it over the bread. Let's make sure to get all sides of this. So let's get our final topping on this and put our bread in the oven. Here we go. We are going to top this with sesame seeds. You can use other things. You can use oats or uh, almond slices poppy seeds even. There's all kinds of things you can you can use. So because this is a you know like a sweet type of bread, I would limit it to toppings that you know would go with something sweet. I and mean, poppy seeds can be a little bit of a stretch. It's not necessarily used on a sweet bread. Sometimes it's more on savory things like onion, like everything bagels, you know people will put stuff like that on it. I'm going to put a lot of sesame seeds on this because as this bread bakes, it you know, might expand more, so the seeds are going to spread out. Okay, we are done here. Doesn't this look beautiful? Kind of looks like a rose or something. Uh, almost too pretty to eat. Bake the bread at 350 degrees for 45 minutes and make sure to wind the dough loosely around itself. or you can split the dough into two breads and bake those for about 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, folks, here is the Easter bread, fresh and hot, out of the oven. 
and this is like really big and puffy just to let you know how big it is here are my hands right here and I don't have these big lobster cracking hands or anything I just have like you know regular female hands and and it's it's just nice and large so what I'm going to do is unfortunately for my family I'm going to be cutting into this and um, you know just eating a little bit here with you now and then we'll all get some later too at the table but it won't be nice and uh, complete like this so um, I'm going to serve myself up some with you here all right here we go I am about to have some of this Middle Eastern Easter bread with some butter and a little bit of marmalade. This is going to be so good. You should have smelled the kitchen when this was baking. It filled up the whole house. And if you've never smelled this spice before, oh my goodness, once you smell it, you're gonna be like, oh God, that's great. And you'll definitely know it's the holidays because this is uh, something that's often baked for holidays like Easter and Christmas. All right, so I am going to cut into this bread here on the side. Just get a little piece. and eat it with you. Wonderful. I'm going to put my butter and my marmalade on now. See, it looks perfect. You know, you can really make this any time of year as long as you have a little bit of time on your hands you can certainly eat this i think i took a little too much butter but <laughs> that's okay right now for some marmalade Look at this, my friends. Are you ready? Let's see what this tastes like. Oh man, that is to die for. That is literally so good. You don't have to have anything on this bread even. When you taste this bread without anything on it, you might taste, you might detect that it tastes like slightly apricot from that spice. That's the only thing I can really describe it as. So, anyway guys, I hope you um, get this spice and try making this bread and I don't think you're going to regret it. Just set enough time to make it and you and your family will really enjoy it. So, it's going to be hard for me to not eat more of this before I serve it to my family, <laughs> I'm going to try to serve it with the cut side facing away so they don't know I cut into it. <laughs> A little trick of mine. And happy Easter, or if you're watching this on another holiday, enjoy your holiday. Tell me, everyone, what is your favorite bread to eat on holidays? Whether you make it yourself or you buy it. I would love to know. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.